Two years later, the council again invoked a public facility strategy, this time to manage a shortage of new water. And this, occurred, this uh, stayed in place while our new uh, water treatment plant on the Willamette River was constructed. In both cases, the public facility strategy slowed development and gave the city time to uh, develop infrastructure to catch up to the growth rate that was occurring. 1997 saw us reconstruct the I-5-283 interchange from Wilsonville Road under the freeway to accommodate more traffic. It also saw the beginning of a large debate when Governor Kitzhaber sought to supersize a prison at the damaged state hospital site in Wilsonville. <coughs> the community rallied in opposition and huge hearings were held in this very room. Hundreds of citizens came to speak out at Department of Corrections hearings. Two years After two years of debate, the governor agreed to a Wilsonville proposed compromise to accept the siting of the prison, but to locate it in our northwest industrial area, not at damage. Our fourth decade was the 2000s. These decades fly by, don't they? <laughs> it started slow, but grew to be a housing transit. The population in 2000 was about 14,000 residents. The dot-com recession and then not the 9-11 attacks markedly slowed business activity. <coughs> Coffee Creek Correctional Institution opened in 2001 as a public, as a women's prison facility and quickly became a model of public involvement and support as exemplified by TACE through a Child's Eyes program founded by former Mayor John Ludlow and supported by the Wilsonville Rotary Club. A year later, the Willamette Water Treatment Plant opened, allowing us to end the water public facility strategy. And the expanded library opened, with, built with bonds approved in a 2000 vote. By 2003, the Burns Brothers had closed their truck stop and opened Argyle Square Shopping Center with Target and Costco as anchor tenants. Finally, Wilsonville residents could buy socks without leaving town. <laughs> <laughs> Voters gave advisory approval for the creation of a second urban renewal debt district, what we call our West Side District, creating funding for many road projects primarily focused around integrating Villebois into our Wilsonville system. Construction on Villebois began in 2005. Our new city hall was opened in 2006 after years of debate and Morassi Plaza Fountain at Memorial Park also opened. So four decades brings us to today, 2009, and the question of this is, who are we at this point? Well, this is who we are. We have a population of 18,000 people. We are the ninth fastest growing city in the state of Oregon of those with a population over 10,000. Our population increase was 28% between the year 2000 and 2008, as compared to the overall Portland metropolitan area, which showed about a 10% increase. Our residential community consists of about 8,400 residential units, approximately half single-family homes and half multifamily units. An additional 1,500 residents reside as inmates at Coffee Creek Correctional Facility. Villebois Urban Village continues under construction. It has received international recognition for innovation as a high quality, compact, neighborhood friendly urban development. Our business community consists of some 800 businesses of which about 300 are sole proprietorships. Approximately 500 of our businesses employ 14,000 plus people with two thirds in high wage industrial occupations like manufacturing and wholesale distribution. However, 90% of our jobs are filled by workers who commute from throughout the Portland metro area and the North Willamette Valley. Our SMART system, now South Metro Area Rapid Transit, provides over 300,000 rides per year. West, the West Side Express Service commuter rail opened in February, and SMART relocated their operations to an adjacent site where there are 400 park and ride spaces and 48 bicycle lockers. Together, 
Wes and SMART are a major recruitment and retention tool, especially for our larger high-tech employers. These operations also free up highway capacity for freight movement and better position Wilsonville for future industrial growth. Today, our private sector payroll amounts to some $800 million a year, a 77% increase in the last 10 years. The real market value of Wilsonville properties is $3.7 billion, a 136% increase in the same 10-year period. Last November, voters approved a Clackamas County Library District. <coughs> Revenue from the district will bring some $300,000 per year in non-city revenues to our library system. This will give Wilsonville citizens access to more robust hours, more services, and more library resources. We currently face a recessionary economy, and we need to take a steely-eyed view of our challenges, but recognize and play to our strengths. Construction of housing has faced a slowdown from its unsustainable breakneck pace. We see a 75% decline in residential housing permits over the last two years. Overall permit values for all types of construction for the fiscal year is expected to end at about $25 million, approximately 40% of our recent average year. <coughs> We have lost 1,000 private sector jobs in the last year, approximately 6.5% of our total job base. We have lost multi-hundred jobs at Precision Interconnect, Nike, Hollywood Video, about 90 jobs at InFocus, and nearly 200 will be lost at Joe's. These have been somewhat offset by some of our new businesses that have, been, that have arrived. Rockwell Collins ultimately will bring about 300 jobs. The Coca-Cola remodel will bring nearly 200 to Wilsonville. Various other businesses, uh, mostly smaller groups, will bring approximately 100, have brought approximately 190 jobs in the last year. So we've gained approximately 600. Commercial and industrial vacancies are a concern. We currently have a 17% vacancy rate in Wilsonville's 12 million square feet of commercial and industrial property. One quarter of the vacancy consists of the single Nike warehouse, without which we would have a 13% vacancy rate. For comparison, the general Portland area industrial rates uh, range from 6 to 15% vacant, suburban commercial from generally 8 to 19% vacant. But if you compare combined commercial and industrial rates, Hillsboro is something in the range of 26% vacant and Tualatin is something in the range of 20% vacant. However, this means that 83% <laughs> of our industrial and commercial properties are currently occupied and are productive. We have issued nearly 30 new business licenses in Wilsonville in the past 12 months. So we arrive looking at Wilsonville's fifth decade and the question of who will we become? Today's slowdown offers us the opportunity to pause and consider, where are we going? What kind of community are we trying to build? What are our common values? How can we work together in a positive, constructive way? Will we find the necessary desire and drive to create the economy and the environment that will sustain us? We face transportation challenges, especially on the South I-5 Metro Corridor, where we are reaching peak rush hour capacity and experiencing more gridlock more frequently. The I-5 Boone Bridge over the Willamette River is a regional bottleneck. It carries nearly as much traffic at 122,000 trips a day as the I-5 Interstate Bridge over the Columbia River. But it actually carries one-third more freight than the Columbia River crossing. We have a positive in economic stimulus projects. A variety of things fund, have been awarded funding and construction is planned. ODOT is proceeding with a Charbonneau